So welcome to Emerald Farm, the, the home of the proud Gill family, a family that uh, are steeped in harness racing history here in the UK. They've got an impressive CV in recent years. Uh, they'll be remembered for the likes of Reed's Mystique and Titanium, two top class pacers, but they are accustomed to going to the big stage and of course, reaping the rewards. Let's talk to the family and we go by behind the scenes now. Well, we welcome the, the Gill family now. Look at this. We've got Georgia, the racing manager. Say hello, Georgia. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we, we, we've got uh, the, the real worker here. <laughs> the only worker. Uh, the only worker. <laughs> this is Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Hello. And here he is, money bags himself. John. Yeah. Hi, How are you, John? Great. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for entertaining us today. It's our pleasure. Yeah, looking forward to having a look at your spring fall, yeah. the, the forthcoming season. And I was just saying that, you know, you're accustomed to success on the big stage. Of course, in recent years, Reed's Mystique, Titanium, two top class paces that came through your hands here. Yeah. You must be very proud of their exploits. Very much so, very much so. Um, they both come from Bill, Billeth Wells, those two. Um, after about 10 days, we put titanium in the car. And I said to Vicky, I said, if you just keep this sound, I'll win everything you want. That's how good he was. You weren't wrong. You That's weren't, how good he was. You weren't wrong. Right, we're looking forward to the 2019 crop. Now, let's introduce this fella. Who's this? This is Brian's magician. So tell us a little bit about Brian's magician. Um, he went really, we've won a few races with him now, uh, went really good for Musselburgh a couple of years back for us, but then he had an accident last year, um, he didn't come back so good, but uh, we're really looking forward to him this year, hopefully we'll have some nice wins with him this year. And where do you hope to get him started? Um, I think he'll probably go to Turf Prince at the first meeting. Yes, yeah. And what sort of grade would we be looking at? He's grade two. Grade two? Yeah. Okay. He looks in tremendous. Yeah, he's tremendous good. Tremendous yeah, good boy, good yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, can't wait to get to the races with him. And where do you see him at the end of the season? Hopefully grade 12. <laughs> <laughs> no messing about, no messing about. So Brian yeah. is magician, he's pleasing you. Very much so, very much. He's doing everything correct. He's really happy in his cell. Different to last year, thankfully. So uh, tell us a little bit about last year. It was my fault, totally my fault. Um, the year before when he'd gone really good, we had a girl jogging in every day. This girl wasn't there the following year. So I've just trained him and we just put him on the walker, because I forgot, uh, to cool out. And he just kicked back and put his leg through the paddle and it just ruined the season, to be honest. He shouldn't have been trained or raised, but right. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's different again this year, totally different horse. So he'd been working, what, since January? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And he's really pleasing you. Yeah. Very much so. So, Brywin's magician. Now, Georgia, tell us a little bit about this fellow. Who's this? JR. JR. So, and what's his racing name? Air Paparazzi. Air Paparazzi. And he's, oh, he's really gentle, isn't he? Yeah. He's a lovely, he's a good boy, he is. So, so just tell us a little bit about Air Paparazzi then, Vicky. Uh, he won his maiden a novice for us last year. Um, so he's out now for a grade one. He's a very genuine racehorse. He'll try his best every single time he races. He can take him anywhere, on the hard, on the grass, around any type grass field. Um, and he just does his best for you every time. So he's a good, honest racehorse, yeah. versatile, yeah. yeah, easy to handle. Yeah, he's lovely. Yeah, he's absolutely great. Mm. One Georgia could drive. <laughs> <laughs> no, forget it. <laughs> you don't want me to ruin your horses. So, Air Paparazzi, and sort of what level would we be expecting to see Air Paparazzi at? I'm hoping a decent handicap. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. hoping a decent handicap. Right, JR, the owner, is just he's as genuine as the horse. It's so nice to be around. Yeah. And he just says everything to us. So this is Air Paparazzi. So, who's this? This is Oakwood Oscar. Um, this is um, the two-year-old um, out of the same mare as uh, Oakwood Star Camp. So, has a wonderful page, yeah, beautiful pedigree, yeah, yeah. well a lot, related. A lot to stand up for. <laughs> <laughs> and how's he faring? He's doing lovely. Like Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's training down, he's uh, doing everything that we're asking of him, so it won't be long until he's in, in qualifiers. Yeah, and he's growing oh, nicely. Lovely. Yeah, he's yeah. a real big, he's a real nice shape for a two-year-old. Lovely temperament. Yeah, he's a bit hot on the track. Is he? Yeah, yeah, he's a bit hyper. 
but uh, he's lovely in a stable. But a, go on. He's a teddy bear. He's a, a he's a teddy bear to stroke. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. That that is lovely. And um, have things come easily to him as he as he, as he picked you know as he picked up the game quickly? Yeah, is he a quick um, yeah, he was a quick learner. But as I say, he's a little bit hyper. What are you um, doing? So we're just trying to keep things calm with him and just. Just give him a bit of experience and just getting him down the times and so, so we can get to the qualifiers. Yeah, and hopefully he's sort of targeting those key two-year-old races. Yeah, he's in all the big two-year-old yeah. races, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he'll be targeting for all of them. So here we go, folks. Oakwood, yeah, Oakwood Oscar. Oscar. So who have we got here? This is um, Which Guy Am I? Which Guy Am I? Um, he's just a two-year-old. He's uh, going real nice for us. We're really looking forward to this one. It's very easy going, gets on with his work, never asks for anything, just does it. You point and go, and it's as simple as that for him. And he's related to winners, isn't he? Yes, he's, um, I'm just a little guy's brother. Yes, yeah. So, and now comparing, well, perhaps we shouldn't do this, but comparing the way he's he's progressing to Oakwood, Oscar, are they, are they you know, they're all, about the same they're place? They're all on a similar time, really. Yeah. I mean, Dad comes down the times together. Yes. Um, and they're all they're all at the similar similar. Um, so you can't really compare at the minute until you start to get into qualifiers, and then you get to get, get different feels and stuff of them. But he's just very straightforward. Oscar's a little bit high maintenance. He's just point and go. And how many two year olds would you have in the stable? We've got eight. Eight two year olds. So you're going at it big style at the juvenile yeah. races. Yeah. But obviously that's the but way that's things what have the gone. Owners want. Yes, yes. That's that's the way racing's gone because everybody wants to win the VDM. Yes. It's all about the VDM. Uh, it's it's amazing. You turn the clock back, I don't know, say yeah. ten years. And there were very, and it very even, few two year olds racing. Yeah. Yeah. You had the fraturity yeah. and the odd two year old race, but now it's just monic. So we, we, I mean, we've got two year old races. Sometimes two year olds end up running against three year olds in maidens, yeah. which I don't particularly like. No. And if they have to do that, I do feel that the two-year-olds should have preferential treatment anyway in the draw. But, but we, are, we are now at a point where we've got so many two-year-olds, we are able to put those two-year-old races on anyway. Yeah, and it makes a massive difference being yeah. in their own grade as well. Yeah. There should just be two-year-old races. Um, but sometimes, because York wasn't on last year, it is quite hard. And you do need to get some experience into these horses. So yes. to race them with three-year-olds sometimes is a must just for the experience. I mean, we raced um, Paparazzi in a maiden race at York. Yes. And I think the maiden race I think went 2-3 and I went 2-7. And I was right at the back of the field. It didn't actually do the horse much good but it was a little bit of experience he saw the starting gate he was in with the field of horses and it was a race for him yes and tell me now i mean i've, I've seen your track but i'm very impressed with your track yeah, i might have another look track. at the track would you ever work the horses on grass oh we do we you do did, yeah we have done today yeah we, we, we partner the two-year-olds up yeah um, and then we can overtake and yeah all the time we're, we, sometimes we're on the grass sometimes we're on the hard it just depends because anybody watching this internationally obviously you know most countries they're not accustomed to it but of course yeah. you know grass racing is such an integral part of the game over here yeah of course it is yeah and a lot of the big races are on grass so you've got Tregaron, you've and the the first two year old races at Appleby, which we quite often enter some horses. Yes. So and you want to make sure that they're set up properly. So yeah, for us and for us, our track you can just squeeze two down. Yes. But because the babies and they're just learning, they're in and out as you're trying to pass. So to get on the grass is great because you can do lots of passing and teaching them, get, getting manners on them. That makes sense. So yeah. another exciting two year old here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So this is Mahogany Ash, who uh, I seem to recall winning at Musselburgh last year. Yeah, yeah, he won the two-year-old race at Musselburgh, and it was a great day. Uh, Fiona, Margaret, and Pat, because they really love Musselburgh. Uh, he ran so tough; he was right up the front, right from the start. And for two years to race, race around Musselburgh it is a massive deal, and he did everything correct and managed to win the race for us. And he went over to Ireland and raced in the, the VDM. Yeah, we were a bit disappointed with him in the VDM. He finished fourth, didn't do anything wrong, but just didn't do as good as what we thought he would do. But then came back and we took him to the Breeders' Crown at Turk Prince in the Silver Division. Yes. And he raced a lot better there off a bad draw. So um, we, we're hoping that he'll come out and win some nice races this year.
And have you seen a difference over the last few months during the winter? Has he, has he oh, grown he's and so matured? Different. Yeah, he's a lot different this year. He's a lot bigger. He's a lot more mature. He's, he was so slight last year. You, do, you don't realise what damage you do to two-year-olds sometimes because there wasn't much of him at all, whereas this year is different on him more completely. So he wants the time, and you think he's? Are you excited by by? Yeah, his, yeah, can't wait to get into the races. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, and again, I'm going to ask you the same question: Where do you hope to start him off at? Um, Appleby. I'm not probably Appleby. He'll probably go to yeah, a novice Appleby. race in Appleby, yeah. I think. Well, we know we can perform on grass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's yeah, really good on grass. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. Like, yeah, so this is mahogany ash. Yeah, mahogany ash. Good boy. Just. So this. <laughs> this is Ladyford Topaz. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Ladyford Topaz. Um, Dad bought her as a two-year-old off Jim Stewart. Um, she raced in two-three around Port Manic as a two-year-old, so we're really excited about her last year. We took her up to Corby Wood um, for a maiden race as a three-year-old and um, she just came down the bottom of the ramp and she slipped off the bottom of the ramp and hurt her back leg. So we finished with her for the season and we're bringing her back now and hoping that she's going to win us some good races. And she's pleasing you in her work? Oh yeah, lovely. Yeah, she's doing everything correct. And where would you hope to start her campaign at? Wherever we can get on the wagon. With all, yeah. with all our own horses, Darren. Yeah. They have to come last. Yeah. If there's a space on the wagon, then we can get entered. If there isn't, the owners come first. Yes. The yes. payers come first. Yes. Yeah. Viv's a bad player. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lady for Topaz. So, we're, we're hoping for some good things. And the good thing about this year, of course, for you guys living here, is yes. we've got York. Back. York is back. Yeah. I mean, this just, it must just it, it must have been music to your ears to hear that York was coming back. Oh, definitely. I love York. I really love York racing there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Be glad to get back there. Yeah. You can walk to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it is so important for this game to have two quality hard tracks to complement each other, mm. i.e., Tier Prince yeah. and York. Yeah. 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 You know, to cater for people. You know. Well, it isn't all about two and three year old races. No. It's about these horses as well that win you the races. And having York back, hopefully, will make it a bit easier to win. Yes. It was, yeah, it yes. was yes. so yes. competitive last year. Yes. Everywhere you went, there was 10 horses in every single race. You just, you had to have something so good to win. Hopefully, with having York back, it might just make life a little bit easier. And well, that's it, every horse should be catered for in this Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So great news. York is back. We're looking forward to some success. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So let's introduce the next horse, which is. This is American Mistress. Right. Um, she won two real nice races last year. Um, they were on was, grass. Yeah, on grass. Yeah, Aberystwyth and. Oh, Kill Mary. Kill Mary. That's the yeah. one. Um, and then she was in quite a bit lot of the big stakes races. And she was always really unlucky. Um, something always happened and didn't... Um, she, she got placed a few times, but wasn't lucky enough to win. But this, she is really, really nice filly. She's really talented. And she's developing nicely. Oh, she's, yeah, nicely. She's, so, she's so big and round. She's got a nice big bum on her. Um, and she's so easy full. She's really easy. She's so, wonderful in the cup. Yeah, she does, yeah. Yeah, she's lovely. So this is going to be, hopefully she'll win us some nice races. You, you're looking for some Yeah, I really are with her, yeah. Top class yeah. races. How many races do you, do you think she's going to win? Um, that's a tough question. <laughs> Trust Georgia to come out with a tough question. This is my, my new assistant, Georgia. Um, so, American Mistress, but yeah. would you describe American Mistress as one of the more exciting prospects you've yeah, got in the Yeah, definitely, yeah. Year? Yeah, because she, she's been there, done that. Um, she definitely will have improved on a racing from last year. And as I say, she was a little bit unlucky in her big races. So, yes. hopefully this year... Um, she'll come out and she will get good luck. And uh, would you be happy, you know, about her going forward on the hard tracks? Because, as you were saying, her two wins have come on the grass so far. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. She raced. She raced really good at Tier Prince one day, but yeah. just never, never had any racing luck at all. So this is American Mistress. Yep. American Mistress. This is Oakwood Gossip. Tell me a little bit about her. Oh, uh, well, she also came from Bill Whale Sales in October. We've had her in the stable since then. Um, she's also coming down the times and doing everything we ask of her. 
Um, so we're just looking forward to getting to the qualifiers now and uh, see how she progresses from there. And in terms of you know her development, are you pleased? Yeah, with she's it? got everything there. Yeah, she's um, she's a typical two-year-old that you want. She's not going to be too big and too growy. She's got a bit of width about her. Um, we really like her. So you were saying that you've got eight two-year-olds in training. Yeah. Is, is is that about the most you've ever had in terms of the juvenile yeah, brigade? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on, you've got a question. Is she nice to talk? Yeah, she's really nice. Yeah, she loves being first. She loves having attention. So, is which, it one? Which race do you think she's going to have first, and which, how many races is she going to win? Hopefully, she'll win lots, but she will be also aimed for the North Wales as the first race. So, basically, all your two year olds will be nominated for all the key races. Yeah. 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 So, this is. Go on. Say again. Open gossip. <laughs> this is open gossip. <laughs> So, this is Oakwood Notorious. Tell us a little bit about Oakwood Notorious. Well, we haven't had Oakwood Notorious for very long. He only came in a few weeks ago. Um, so we've just started training. He's a little bit behind the others. Um, it's not as far forward. So um, we'll probably see him a bit later on in the season. Is he calm? Yeah, he's lovely. Yeah, he's a good boy. How many races? Do you think he's going to win and where's he going to go to first? We don't know. He's not that far ahead at the minute. I'll tell you what, George, I'm just going to go have a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours. Okay. Oh. So this is Oakwood Notorious. Yeah. <laughs> this is Oakwood Maverick. Um, he came to us a couple of months ago now. He, um, he's a hated old cult. Um, he was very cold to when we first got him, so we had him gelded. Um, but he's trained down, he's doing everything right. Um, and he will be heading for the North Wales race. And in terms of sires, I mean, tell us a little bit about the, the sires that you're drawn to. Um, well, we've got quite a lot of foreclosures in. Um, and they're, they're, they're doing everything right. We yeah. really liked foreclosure from last year, um, which is probably why we we asked the owners to go for foreclosures. So it yes. doesn't, we've had so many good hasty halls. You could never go past hasty halls, a titanium, misty. We've had so, we've had a lot, yes. a lot of good hasty halls. Yes. Um, and he's, he's, he's quirky, um, but he's got ability. That's what we like to hear. Is, yeah. It's all about the ability. It certainly is. Is he calm and jogging? Um, sometimes. Hello, this is Newtown Jodie. Tell us a little bit about her. Uh, well, we got Newtown Jodie uh, partway through the season last year. Um, she'd already won a couple of races by the time we got her. George, stand still with it. Come here. Um, and then when we got her, we'd actually put her into the uh, Little Welsh Dragon. Um, and we were very lucky that she came out and won the Group 1 for us. So she's already a Group 1 winner yeah. and, and placed in other no notable races. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's, she's very talented, can't wait till this season, but we've got uh, a lot to do to beat uh, Starcamp. Yeah, <laughs> so we Starcamp set yeah. such a high standard last season. Yeah, she did, yeah. Shouldn't be yeah. scared of one horse though. I know, I know, but that's racing, so when you, she's as good as, she's lovely and she does everything what you ask of her, so just can't wait. There's the Sire Stakes Island. Yes. And there's something, I can't just remember now, Darren, there's two races in between. And so we decided to leave them out of the um, out of the oaks. Well, is this the, the whole stable, or have you have you got horses in? in we some... haven't got any three yard fillers. No, but you've got we've Derby got, entries. We've you? got yeah, we've got Ash. He's in the Derby. Yeah, mahogany Ash. Um, uh, but the all the Irish horses, uh, yes. Irish owned horses, are going over the, to the Sire Stakes Island. And I think it's the breeders. I think it's the Sire Stakes Island. Then it was something like the Futurity, and then it was. Um, the Breeders' Crown heats that all came so closely together. I'm feeling so, uncomfortable about this. Yeah, we it, had to make a decision. Yes. And because they had so much travelling to get over to Ireland for the Breeders' Crown, yeah. uh, for the Sire Stakes Island, Dad said we can, they can't do it all. So we. This, I've got, I've got a feel for you because this must be a dilemma for happen. yourselves when you've got good two and three year olds. Yeah. And basically, all of the good two and th three year old races in the UK are going to be staged by the end of July. Yeah, it's stupid really because you've got all of September and there's no racing for them apart from the Sire States. 
that it would have been so much easier or so much better for the horses to try and spread these races out a little bit yeah. especially it isn't about the racing it's about the traveling yes. and it takes them so much longer to get over the traveling especially when they're over to Ireland that takes them that much longer to get there and back yeah I mean th these races seem to be coming thick and fast during such a you know just a small window of, of time of yeah. six to eight weeks yeah and, and, virtually every week. and for the uh, for the oaks that she should have been in yeah that's a major race that yeah. we would have wanted her to have been in yes. but you just cannot ask her no. to do everything no maybe i think i think it's an issue that definitely needs addressing yeah. but the, in the thing UK. is i don't understand why the really owners and trainers need to get a little bit more involved and say yes. look why are these races so close together they need splitting up otherwise we're not going to enter in them yeah yeah and you know there's more and more focus now on two and three-year-old races yeah well that's all people want people yeah. that's what people are wanting do you know vicky i can't help thinking now with musselborough moving tregaron yeah. moving no Aberystwyth. There is a massive chunk out of our season. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, August. I'm so gutted about Aberystwyth. Oh. Aberystwyth was the yes. place. Yeah. And, and, and Tregaron. And I mean, I love Tregaron, but I mean, Aberystwyth, we loved going to Aberystwyth. And on that back stretch, we all used to, always used to get the wagon up so you could just sit and watch the racing. It was just brilliant. Mm. Absolutely gutted that that's not here. But anymore. I just can't help thinking that we've got a chunk out of the season now. <coughs> well, yeah. You, you've got the VDM to look forward to mid August, but. What's after that? What have you got in terms of the real major races in the UK? Yeah, nothing after that. No. Nothing. Welcome to this beautiful corner of North Yorkshire. This is this really is God's country. Uh, a lovely spring afternoon. And John and Vicky, just tell us a little bit about your, your training track here. I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing. Um, the training track, basically, is five inch stone underneath along with ash and then glass on top and I've got the I think personally I've got the best cushion for horses in the world a lot of people disagree with me but personally for me I've got the best cushion for standard breads in the world when you said glass I was absolutely astonished yeah. now is, is is this is this something that's that's done around the world I mean are there other training tracks used by trainers around the globe that that would have glass in the in the surface and um, we say glass just tell us a little bit about the glass I mean I can I see it now actually shining I, I can actually see it <laughs> shining in the sun this is glass there's not one sharp edge on it well you can see the I can see the bits of green and the it's the most glistening in the sun it's the most kind surface and where did you get the idea from uh hugh thomas from what, what's the welsh track called i'm Am, Am, Am valley um he told me about it and he said gregor menzies and someone else was traveling back from there he said just ask them they've seen it <coughs> and i rang both gregor and someone else oh brian brian gilvia and they both said it's out of this world john do it and in terms of maintenance, is it time consuming? Is it, is it expensive? Uh, no, it's very cheap. <coughs> a lot cheaper than uh, limestone dust. Um, time consuming, I would say it takes me seven minutes in the morning. But it's horse friendly, that is the thing. Mo most beautiful surface I've ever, ever been on. And I've been to wherever you want me to say, yeah. Freedom Reek, yeah. uh, Meadowlands, Woodbine, Mohawk. I've trained at Mohawk. It's for, for training. I'm not yes. saying for racing. No, but for training. It's beautiful under your feet. You can feel it under your feet. And how do you find it, Vicky? Oh, it's great. It works so well for us. And we also use the grass on the inside on the inside as well. We do a lot of passing with the youngsters. Um, it just works really well. We have everything here that we actually need. It is a beautiful setup. And would you ever? Would you ever have the opportunity of going to Greenhammers and just down the road? To, we do, but we don't jog? need to. No, we've You've got, got everything, everything here. Everything. Yeah. yeah, we've got a start car. We've got everything we need. You've got lots of carts, yep. I'm, so I'm told. You've got a museum <laughs> here. I collect them. Uh, you collect them. <laughs> yeah, that is your fetish, John. Yeah. Um, John, I mean, you, you've been. If you don't mind me saying this, you've been in the game yep. since God was a boy. Yeah. Me and uh, Michael Law grew up together. You grew up together. We were yeah. kids together. Yeah. 
we're babies together. Um, you seem, you know, we've been fortunate enough to get paid for every day of our life. We do something that we love. You're living the dream. And Vicky, that's something you're doing, living the dream. When you were in school, when you were in high school, and the careers teacher used to say to you, right, Vicky Gill, what would you like to do for a living out there in the real world? What did you say? Do the harness racing. And that was it? Yeah. I always remember Johnny Foy. Did they try Foy, and put you off? No, Johnny Foy did once and he said to me, whatever you do, Vicky, do not get bitten by the bug. And I'm still here now. <laughs> it's, it's fatal, isn't it? It's a great story. Go on. Well, yeah, I bought Bobby Hill. He got a massive knee, big knee. Pimmy, he and Pimlock got it down for me. He sent me this blister to get, get it down. So I got the knee prepared, uh, repaired. And I knew he was good because I'd broke him in. But he'd had this accident with his knee. So I bought him. And I started work in October on him to get him ready for Appleby, Apple, the big Appleby. So um, January, it would start start jogging and that and I didn't have a track then so Vicky used to be on the school bus putting a jodpers on in January so she could exercise him before it got dark that's dedication and God bless him Bobby he will need some final apple on the Monday so basically 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 Vicky there was no hope for you no, definitely not. No, I was in it from the start. It was, it was, it was horses <laughs> yeah. and, and, and nothing else. The kids on the bus used to laugh at her, but yeah. she loved what she was doing. Yeah, didn't matter to Vicky. Yeah. They could laugh all they want. Yeah. I mean, look, you've seen you know some good things. You've seen some not so good things in the sport. One of the biggest talking points, John, in harness racing here in the UK is handicapping. Yep. Right. There are systems that seem to work around the world <laughs> in Canada, Australia. New Zealand. Do you think now we should be just taking a leaf out of their book, the professional multi-million dollar industries that they have in those countries, and taking a leaf out of their handicapping uh, models, and just having a look to see if we could adopt some of those systems or those systems here in the UK? It's, it's, it's idiot proof. Uh, the success is in Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand. Well, let's just have one. Yeah. Let's just have one. Because this since this system has been brought in in the UK, harness racing has gone zunk down there. The record book used to be that thick. Now it's that thick. We're losing it and losing it and losing it. In other words, less racing. Yes. Yeah. Shorter seasons. Yeah. We need some a, a change and sooner rather than later. Yeah. Here, here. Right. We're going to end on a, an upbeat note. Can we have uh, a couple of horses to follow for the season then? The top horses, come on. Just give top a couple horse. of horses that you think are really going to hit the Ours headlines. Ours or other people's? Yours. Ours. Oh, no, let's let's focus on oh, yours. Oh no, that's not fair, that's ah, my that's one. Oh, no, no, here we go. Well, <laughs> I got him first. <laughs> family quarrel. <laughs> so Newtown Jody we've established. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. A, definitely a key horse to follow from this yeah. stable. Uh, American Mistress. Okay. American Mistress, Newtown Jody. Yeah. yeah. John, Vicky, many thanks for your time and good luck for the forthcoming season. It's Thank all you. privilege. Thanks, Thank you.